What is up guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are going to successfully execute a maximum performance takeoff out of John Wayne Airport or Orange County, Kilo Sierra, November Alpha Airport here in Southern California. This airport is a very fun airport to fly in and out of, but you definitely have to bring your A-game as a pilot. There's been a couple of streams where I've tried to go in and out of here, but whether it be technical issues or internet issues, I haven't been able to really get the emphasis down on how to properly execute the max performance noise abatement procedure that plagues this airport here and the pilots that fly in and out of it. So let's jump into the cockpit of our A320, and I'm going to show you guys how to set this up and do it properly. All right, so here we are in our A320 airplane. Everything is pretty much ready to go. We're just getting ready to finish fueling there. What we do have to do is go over some of our performance numbers in the MCDU. All right, so as I come down here to the box, we're going to go over to the perf page. Now, in real life, what we have to do is we need to set a manual thrust reduction and acceleration altitude for this airport. All right, so let's quickly talk about why we have to do any of this in the first place and what is noise abatement and why are we doing all these special procedures in the MCDU. So to start, the airport maintains 10 permanent noise monitoring stations. You could see the 10 of them located here on this picture. The noise monitoring stations are controlled by what we call GANO or the General Aviation Noise Ordinance. This has been adopted by the city of Orange County to regulate the hours of operation and maximum permitted noise levels associated associated with GA operations. Compliance with GANO is mandatory unless necessary by ATC instructions or in-flight slash medical emergency or anything else you know, pertaining to the safety of flight. So GANO applies to commercial operations and general aviation, and it is mandatory that you comply with the noise abatement procedure. So that's going to get us started on what we have and why we are doing all of this. All right, so taking a look here at our noise abatement procedure pictorial, what we are going to accomplish is do a maximum performance takeoff upon reaching the initial power reduction point, which is going to be 800 feet above field. This is about 860 feet barometric altitude as the airport sits right at about that 56 foot mark above sea level. Upon reaching 800 feet above field, we are going to climb at V2 plus 10. We will maintain the reduced power, maintain the slat and flap configuration in the takeoff configuration until reaching a 3,000 feet above field. At 3,000 feet above field, we will continue to maintain a positive rate of climb and accelerate smoothly to en route climb speed. We will then retract the flaps and slats on schedule. So essentially what's happening here is we're going to have a very rapid acceleration and climb out to 800 feet. At 800 feet, we reduce the thrust levers to the climb detent. At at this point, the airplane is going to continue to climb at a reduced thrust, and the Airbus flight director will have you pitching right about V2 plus 10. So that's what the airplane is going to be doing. Now we need to program the box so it will do exactly as we are planning. So let's jump back into our sim and get the MCDU programmed. So to properly set the thrust reduction slash acceleration altitude for this airport, we need to come in here and manually input 860 feet for thrust reduction, and our acceleration altitude is going to be 3060. Now we have manually entered the noise abatement profile for departure on this airport. So another thing to take note of, coming out of this airport, it is a flaps three toga requirement on this airport here. So we are going to set our flaps to three and we're not going to set flex because we are going to do a flaps three toga. All right, so now that our V-speeds are set in the box, let's go ahead and get this airplane off the gate and ready to depart. Disconnected. I'm bypass pin has been removed. Hand signal on the right. 
Well, see you next time and have a safe flight. Now for taking off in John Wayne, as you'd probably expect, taking off 20 left is not going to be able to cut it. We're only 2,800 feet available for departure. So you will always depart from a 20 right, unless for some reason you do have to go off of 20 left. But uh, you're probably going to get 20 right as your runway for departure. Now, a little note here about this airport. In real life, holding short of Lima here, this is a an actual clearance that is required. You do not taxi up in front of taxiway Lima. You actually hold your position here on Alpha until you get clearance to cross or clearance to hold short of 20 left at Lima. You guys might remember the Harrison Ford incident where he actually landed his airplane on this taxiway right here. And this is in part of a reason for that because they don't want airplanes parked here in case anybody mistakes this taxiway for 20 left they don't want you flying right over the tails of a commercial jet so that is why we got hot spot one there located at 20 left intersection of lima All right, so again, approaching Taxiway Lima, we'll go ahead and simulate that we've been cleared to cross runway 20 left and hold short of 20 right on intersection Lima. So we will continue our taxi at this point. All right, so one, let's go ahead and brief the takeoff here real quick before we actually take the runway and commence this maximum performance takeoff. Now, out of John Wayne, you're probably going to have, depending on your operator, most of them that I know of have the same limitation is it is a static takeoff only. So what that means for the Airbus is we have a little limitation here that we, can only, we do not want to exceed 50% N1 with the brakes on and by brakes i mean not the parking brake just standing on the pedals here so our limitation in the airbus is going to be 50 percent n1 static and then we will release the brakes and advance the thrust levers to the toga detent now again remember the fadec will take over the the speed of which the engines will accelerate so there is no need to baby and nurse the thrust levers into the toga detent once you're stable at 50 percent and you are static release the brakes and get those thrust levers to the toga detent promptly now one last note about a maximum performance takeoff in the airbus if your performance requires it of you in this particular in this particular takeoff it does not but there may be a limit there may be a situation where you are required to do a packs off or a no pack takeoff talking about the air conditioning packs when you take bleed air from the engines you are reducing power so by doing a pack takeoff you're going to have more thrust available to you should you need it now with our current weights in this in this departure we do not need to go ahead and turn the packs off we're going to leave them operating there's another method of doing this as well and in the preferred method is to actually leave the APU master on during the takeoff roll. So if the APU is on with the bleed on during takeoff, the packs will automatically be inhibited and the APU will have priority over the bleed system. So you're essentially accomplishing the same performance that you would if you shut the packs off. However, the APU is still going to be providing environmentals for the cabin. So it's much more environmentally comfortable for the passengers in the back by leaving the APU on instead of turning the packs off. In this particular takeoff, we are not going to turn the packs off nor leave the APU on because at our current weight, the performance permits that we can go ahead and do a toga takeoff with packs on. But that's just a note about maximum performance with the packs selection. So once we're cleared for takeoff, let's go ahead and get our lights on and take the runway and do a maximum performance departure out of John Wayne. When you take the runway, it is wise to always use maximum available runway so don't cut yourself short there try to come out here to the line in a 320 about two runway stripes over from the threshold is when you can commence your hard turnover and you should be able to line up right on center line all right with a stable on the runway we're going to go ahead and commence our to toga takeoff all right remember we're going to nose forward on the stick 
50% and one. Engines are stable. Going to Toga. Release the parking brakes and hang on. Mantoga SRS runway. Auto thrust is blue. 80 knots, thrust set. V1, rotate. Positive rate, gear up. Now make this a little bit larger for you here. Remember, we're waiting for 860 feet to begin our reduction in power. There it is. Thrust climb, auto thrust. We're going to maintain configuration and we'll pitch it for about that V2 plus 10. There is 3060. Now we can begin to lower the nose. There's our F speed. We're going to select flaps one. And the aircraft will begin to accelerate at normal climb power. At this point, you do have a restriction here at or below 5,000 feet. So just be ready to get that last flap retraction in there before the airplane does level because it will accelerate pretty rapidly. And there is a possibility to overspeed the flaps here if you're not paying attention. Go ahead and select flap zero. And complete the after takeoff checklist. And that's going to complete your max takeoff performance out of John Wayne noise abatement procedure included in the Flight Factor A320. All right, that's going to conclude this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed the content. Until next time, I'm V1. See ya.